जय राध जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी कोटि जन वल्लभ दीदी वजदारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಭಜಜನರಂಜನ ಭಜಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತೀರ ವನ ಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ತೀರ ವನ ಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಗೋಕುಲ ನಂದ ರಾಧ ಗೋಕುಲ ನಂದ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಗೋಕುಲ ನಂದ ರಾಧ ಗೋಕುಲ ನಂದ ಜಯ ಪಂಚ ತತ್ವ 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 ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪ್ರಭು ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾಂಡಿತ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ನಿಷ್ಠ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ನಿಷ್ಠ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ನಿಷ್ಠ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರೌಪಾದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಸೊ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿಬೋಟೀಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟ್ಯೂನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೆ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಡು ದಿ ಮಂಗಲಾಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಾಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ಮುನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ 
श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कथा मह्यम ददा स्वापदा वंदेह श्री गुरो श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांच स्वाद्रजात सहगना रघुनादीव साइत सवधूत पिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादा सहगना ललिता श्री विशाका हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकलपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निद्वैताधाधार श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो हरे कृष्ण आई होप यू आर एबल टू यम यू होके सो so today's uh, subject uh, uh, matter is uh, the difficulties um, how to deal with them what are the various tools um, um, we we get from the lives of uh, uh, various devotees uh, exalted devotees um, so that's the subject matters we all go through difficulties uh, to a degree uh, some experience uh, to lesser degree some to a higher degree but uh, in respect to uh, who you are uh, doesn't matter everybody will go through um, these difficulties um so there is a little story first i would like to narrate and then we can um, move to the subject matter so once uh, there was a saint uh, who was uh, traveling a uh, long distance um, and he was walking uh, through a, a forest and he was extremely tired because of um, walking um, for a long long time um so because of his tiredness uh, he just prayed to uh, the lord uh, saying uh, oh lord it would be nice if i had an horse then i can jump on it and ride and then go ahead to my destination so when he had the desire uh, there or appeared there, there was a horse immediately and he jumped on it and he started riding this horse he was very happy that there was a horse so later and um, he realized within a short time but the horse was pregnant so he had to jump down because as a saint you can't um, jump on a pregnant horse so yeah he got down and and then soon the horse delivered a baby so baby horse was there and it was raining heavily in the forest so the sage what he what he did was uh, because the baby was ours was unable to uh, walk um so it was just born it needed some help so but he had to go to his destination so there was no way he, he took that horse put it around his neck like this and 
you know, going forward um, towards his destination. Then he was telling the Lord, oh Lord, I thought I would ride on a horse, but the horse is riding on me. So this is the situation. Sometimes we, we think that, um, uh, you know, we, we wanted some kind of pro uh, solution, but the solution itself can become a problem. Mm -hmm. So today, um, I chose to read a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Yait Kanto. I'll put it up here. Let's see. Yes. So let me share the screen. Share the screen. So this is the chapter, uh, Canto, Canto 8, chapter 4. Um, so this chapter 4 actually is entitled, Gajendra Returns to the Spiritual World. Hmm. So in this chapter, um, we, we all know the story of Gajendra very well. Many times we, are, we have heard and um, so Gajendra um, having like caught in the jaws of crocodile uh, was uh, delivered by the Lord um, and was liberated. So in this chapter, um, the history of um, Gajendra and the crocodile um, were given. So who was Gajendra? Gajendra is, uh, is, is king of elephants and what was his past life um, was mentioned. Also the crocodile and past life was mentioned. Crocodile was a, uh, was a Gandharva, um, a celestial being and he was cursed to take birth uh, as a crocodile. Um, elephant Gajendra, king of elephants, he was a king, a king named Indra Dumna. Um, so he was cursed to take birth as um, an elephant or Gajendra. So we will read that. So Gajendra returns to the spiritual world. So very small chapter, only 20 verses, but uh, we can learn so much uh, from, from this uh, lesson. Chapter Shri Shuko Vacha Evam Shaptwa Gato Gatsyo Bhagavan Rupasanugaha Indra Dhyumyo Pirajar Shir Dishtam Tad Upadharayan Apanaha Kaunjarim Yonim Atmasmruti vinashini Ariyarchana nu bhavena Yad gajat pe pyanusmruti. So directly we go to the translation. Shukadeva Goswami continued My dear king, after Agatya Muni had thus cursed the king Indradimna, the Muni left that place along with his disciples. Since the king was a devotee, he accepted Agatya Muni's curse as welcome because it was the desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, although in the next life, he got the body of an elephant because of devotional service, he remembered how to worship and offer praise to the Lord. So in this verse, it is said that uh, he was cursed, this king was cursed. Let's read the purport, beautiful purport by Srila Prabhupada. So a few uh, weeks ago, I was reading this purport 
and then I felt like uh, it's it's um, it's worthwhile sharing this purport. And Prabhupada's purports are so amazing, and um, you know every time you read a purport, you can take so much out of it. Um, uh, it's like a ocean, just one purport. So much treasure is there in each and every purport. And this purport is so beautiful. I think every aspiring devotee must read this on a regular basis. Um, when I read this, I felt so happy. So the purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. This is the unique position of a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although the king was cursed, he welcomed the curse because a devotee is always aware that nothing can happen without the desire of the Supreme Lord. That's a wonderful point. I'll repeat that. Although the king was cursed, he welcomed the curse because a devotee is always aware that nothing can happen without the desire of the Supreme Lord. Although the king was not at all at fault, not at fault, Agatya Muni cursed him. And when this happened, the king considered it to be due to his past deeds. Tattenukampam susamikshamanaha. That's a famous verse from 10th uh, Canto, 14th uh, chapter, the 8th verse. Uh, Prabhupada quotes that uh, verse very often. Um, that's the jewel uh, uh, of the verses, uh, we can say. We'll also read that verse a little later. Um, so King considered it to, it to be due to his past deeds. This is a practical example of how a devotee thinks. He regards any reverses in life as blessings of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, instead of being agitated by such reverses, he continues his activities of devotional service. And Krishna takes care of him and enables him, him to be promoted to the spiritual world, back to the Godhead. So I'll repeat again, that's another. Therefore, instead of being agitated by such reverses, he continues his activities of devotional service. And Krishna takes care of him and enables him to be promoted to the spiritual world, back to Godhead. If a devotee has to suffer the reactions of his past deeds, the Supreme Lord arranges for him to be given only token of those reactions. And very soon he is freed from all the reactions of material contamination. One should, one should therefore adhere to devotional uh, service. And the Lord himself will very soon see to one's promotion to the spiritual world. A devotee should not be disturbed by unfortunate circumstances but must continue his regular program depending on the Lord for everything. Again, I have to repeat this sentence. A devotee should not be disturbed by unfortunate circumstances, but must continue his regular program depending on the Lord for everything. The word upadarayan, considering is very significant in this word, in this verse, this word indicates that a devotee knows what is what. He understands what is happening in the material conditional life. So, so Hare Krishna. Mm, there is a little bit of sunshine on my face. So, so thanks to Sun God. <laughs> Um, yes. Right. <clears throat> so we all know that um, Gajendra, 
the king of elephants was was caught uh, by this great crocodile when he was enjoying in the lake with his uh, uh, with his friends uh, golf friends let's say and he was delivered and as i mentioned this chapter details who was that uh, elephant uh, the king of elephants so it is said that uh, dravida desha means south india uh, the state of tamil nadu that was ruled by king indradumna so he was a great king and um, at certain certain age he, he left everything and he retired um, to the forest so although he had uh, so much wealth so many servants so many nice facilities for his enjoyment uh, he had voluntarily given them up mm -hmm. so generally people look for nice enjoyment look for nice comforts it's difficult for them to give up mm -hmm. actually they hanker for these uh, nice enjoyments here king indradumna so he voluntarily given up all these nice enjoyments and retired to the forest to practice and devotional service so when he was uh, practicing devotional service um, so this uh, sage one sage his name was agatsya he arrived with his disciples it's lord's arrangement so they visited him and that time he was absorbed in meditation so he did not uh, receive the saintly king saint saint uh, the sages um, he did not welcome usually uh, any guest comes or anyone normally comes there should be um, welcome words should be received nicely but here a king uh, it was not a um, you know it's an accidental error you know he, he was just meditating on supreme lord and he was fully absorbed in that devotion and that time the sage visited him so he couldn't receive this uh, agastya muni this sage so cursed him he was not at all fault eh? um but he cursed him saying that because you are so dull uh, so dumb you will receive a body of an elephant elephant is so dumb and so dull uh, it doesn't know who it is in in human form um it is possible to think yes think that uh, we are not this body we are different from the, this body we are spirit soul but the you know the, the lower species is is too difficult to realize that aspect of it so so he cursed uh, and he left from that place so propa nicely narrates it um that uh, king um you know he could have probably counter cursed or he could have begged oh my lord oh my sage i made a great mistake please relieve me from this burden he could have done that but here um king indradumna he just welcomed it it's amazing hmm? um once uh, you know bhakti rasam tamara ji was giving class and uh, when he was talking about this uh, queen kunti and so we, we know queen kunti one devotee asked you know uh, maharaj queen kunti as uh, you know is asking for more miseries you know he's asking she is asking more miseries uh, to have more miseries more calamities in our life should we should we ask as well you know krishna give me more calamities more miseries and maharaj replied saying that have we not got enough <laughs> have we not got enough hmm? so here uh, king indradumna he just welcomed it uh, why did he welcome it's an interest point why did he welcome he welcomed thinking it's lord's arrangement 
nothing can happen without the will of the Lord. A blade of grass doesn't move without the will of the Lord. So this was his consciousness. He welcomed it. Prabhupada says welcomed it. Hmm? And Prabhupada writes in that purport and what else he thought? Uh, first he welcomed. Secondly, he thought, he thought because of my past deeds. So that was the second point. Firstly, he welcomed. Secondly, that it's just because of my past deeds, it's happening. So my Lord, um, no, he, he will, you know, yes, my Lord will make sure that I will get through this danger. And there, when he mentioned that, you know, thinking that uh, it's my past deeds, and he did not um, object to the curse. And uh, so Prabhupada at that point quotes a famous verse from 10th Canto, which we will go, um, that uh, famous words like Lord Brahma says that, uh, you know, tolerance, uh, uh, you know, whoever uh, uh, ex uh, tolerate, um, you know, his, his miseries or difficulties, and while tolerating still offers his obeisances to you, he will come back to you without fail. Uh, we will go and read that purport later. Um, Prabhupada puts so many jewels in that uh, purport. Um, so Prabhupada says that um, uh, should not be agitated. The material nature is such that it, it always provides an opportunity for us to get agitated. It's very easy to get agitated. You know, we know the famous verse, um, Upadruta means always disturbed. We're always disturbed. Hmm? So many disturbances for us. Hmm? One mobile phone is enough these days to, <laughs> to, to disturb you and to, to uh, make you lose your peace. Mm. Earlier, we were thinking that, you know, having this iPhone and et cetera, um, you know, laptop is, is a great boon, but the great boon become as a great personal. Yes, once you go on to the laptop, you don't know where you go, you click one window and then from there, from there, it goes, the cycle. Yeah? And then WhatsApp is a big thing, like, you know, Facebook, these things are there. So already we will disturbed. So uh, Prabhupada, however, says that, you know, should um, not to be agitated, not easy, not to be agitated when there are problems, very difficult very difficult not to be agitated. And he mentioned another uh, jewel, wonderful point that uh, without being disturbed, one should continue one's devotion for that. One should have it. One should have it. One should have a, one should have a regular program. So this is what which uh, this, this point really touched me more when I was reading that purport than other points, that a regular program should be there for us. That means uh, there is like uh, whatever, whether it is Sangha Guru, um, uh, whether it is chanting our rounds, whether it is doing a morning Mangal Harti or whatever little Harti and reading Bhagavatam 15, 20 minutes or whatever. And then if you are preaching, then you should how that and whether whether whatever service you are doing. So there should be a regular program. That regular program should be continued even in the difficulties. And if we do that, the Lord will definitely take care of us. That's what Prabhupada is mentioning. So people sometimes, you know, we ask Prabhu, like, you know, when, when a problem comes, it's easy to get uh, completely deviate. You know, some people say that, uh, some people say that I've stopped chanting. Um, you know, some people say that I'm unable to come to temple. I'm unable to read my Bhagavatam. Hmm? So in those cases, 
uh, the the tools are like you know firstly when firstly understand um okay in those cases one should reveal one's mind to a devo dear devotee rupa goswami gives this famous principle nectar of instruction we discussed uh, last sunday um that there are six loving exchanges were given to the devotees and one of the loving exchanges to reveal your mind in confidence not to not to everyone but a trusted devotee we should open up so sometimes i also open up with my family members and not easy you know sometimes they you know they <laughs> they say that uh, you know you are seeing it uh, you know you are making it bigger hmm? but uh, you should reveal it to a, a nice devotee now, this is very very important sometime when you share and um, then the burden is gone it's like you know 50 percentage gone and also our own problem we see differently yes because we are lost our um, uh, balance because of our problem we sometimes we may not be able to take the right decision whereas the other devotee uh, who is not in the same situation may see it from a different angle so that's one thing like firstly revealing in our, our mind in confidence this is very important when someone tells you the confidential thing you should not reveal it to others that is also very important that's very very important and you have to choose a person like that when you want to reveal things so that's one thing and secondly try to be a part of a group in you know together we we can travel uh, longer what is that phrase so yes you know if we, if we walk together we can go far so another point is be part of a group see like you know sometimes you may not fit into one group then you can choose another group so when there is a group then what happens is that uh, there is a program regular program that uh, you know devotees will come and discuss that association is very much required everyone whoever you may be whether you are a big or a small person doesn't matter everyone requires this this program sangha part of the sangha a regular discussion should be there hmm. so that's uh, another point third point is that sometimes you say Uh, we, you know i can say i, I can tell uh, see from my point of view that when there is a problem we get uh, deviated from our regular program you know there is a program like you know getting up at certain point and chanting your rounds and then reading bhagavatam then you have a program um, but what happens when there is a problem when there is a big difficulty you just focus on that you just deviate from it hmm? so for that krishna says in the sixth chapter of gita it is the nature of the mind yato hmm? yato nichalati manachanchala mastir mastiram because that is the nature of the mind it is easy to get deviated eh, from our focus but krishna says that bring it back okay no problem you know your regular program is disturbed one day that's okay two days disturbed no problem but bring it back that's another important thing sometimes devotees they don't come for uh, come to the temple for some time no problem you know something happens but bring it back but if you are part of a group if you are part of a sangha group what happens there is someone you know um in touch with you you know they will ask say in, you know in sangha group if one person is not coming we can ask we can inquire what happened prabhu how can we help like that so revealing your mind in confidence to a trusted devotee and secondly being part of a sangha group and having a regular program are very essential hmm, to get through these difficulties so
So let's uh, go back and uh, what Prabhupada said, we will read that uh, verse from 10th Canto. Hmm? So let me share the screen again. I will read. So this is the verse. Hmm? Uh, so what is the connection? Agatya Muni cursed him. And when this happened, the king considered it to be due to his past misdeeds. Hmm? So that's where Prabhupada quotes this famous verse from 10th Canto. Tate nukampam susamikshamano bunjana yevatma krutam vipakam rudvaguva purbir vidadan namaste jiveta yo mokti pade sadhaya bhak. So this is the prayer um, offered uh, by Lord Brahma. You know, so if we go to Srimad Bhagavatam, we, we know the story of uh, um, Brahma, um, you know, Brahma Vimohan Leela. Brahma got bewildered. Uh, the pastime of, uh, uh, you know, the pastime where Lord Brahma got bewildered. And he wanted to test Krishna uh, by stealing caps and as well as his uh, covered friends. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to test Krishna to see if he was a really a God, Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, so we, we know the story. Um, and uh, Krishna, what he did from his, um, after Brahma had stolen everything, um, Krishna manifested everything from his own body. Um, um, so expanded himself to all caps and all covered boys, including their dresses, their flute, and everything, their ornaments, everything is an expansion of Krishna. Uh, so Brahma, um, so he looked at, uh, looked down in Vrindavan, and uh, when he looked down, he saw everybody there. And then when he looked at, you know, yes, all the covered boys and caps were here. He was, he was bewildered. Uh, Later, he came down and he begged forgiveness of Krishna. And Krishna, from his body, you know, all these coward boys then became like, you know, manifested into four-armed uh, um, Lord Vishnu's, four-armed four form of uh, Lord Krishna. And after that, Lord Brahma offered prayers. Uh, these are very beautiful prayers. And also, this chapter is uh, very nice because this is the last chapter Prabhupada had commented on. Um, and uh, so he was, um, you know, um, translating um, these purports, dictating these purports uh, uh, while being in the bed and not uh, eating anything. Uh, so there is a nice connection as well for us. Um, so one of the prayers that Lord Brahma offers to Krishna was this. My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds, and offering you respectable obeisances with his art, words, and body is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. So Lord Brahma basically says that one should uh, patiently, uh, patiently tolerate or wait uh, while suffering, if, if one is suffering anything, while suffering, he should patiently wait and at the same time offer his um, obeisances to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So that if one patiently waits, then, then it is, you know, it's easy for him to go back to Godhead. Srila Sridhar Swami, he says a wonderful point in this connection, the famous uh, commentator of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, so he says that, and legitimate son has to simply remain alive to gain an inheritance from the father. 
Huh? So if he, if a legitimate son simply allows, hmm, I don't know the system here in a, in a written here, but in India, we have a clear system that it goes to the children. If a legitimate son simply becomes alive, do nothing, hmm, then he will get his share yeah, in the father's estate. Similarly, a devotee, a proper rights, one who simply remains alive in Krishna consciousness, following the regulative principles of bhakti yoga, automatically becomes eligible to receive the mercy of Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hmm. So here, the same point is repented, repeated, that we have to just uh, be in Krishna consciousness uh, while experiencing any anything that we are experiencing. And so Krishna, Lord Brahma says that tolerance is very important. And while tolerating, one should continue. And then if one does that, one will surely um, be able to uh, go back to Godhead. So there is a nice link between that and this was. Uh, now we will see some ex the examples from um, other devotees. So Prabhupada, we, we see Prabhupada's own example. Um, you know, it's no, not so conducive his own family life. Um, he was a Gruhastha householder and, and uh, you know, his wife was not cooperative. Uh, we, we all know that when he commented Srimad Bhagavatam first canto, um, so his wife traded it for tea. Uh, so just imagine writing first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, mm, you know, to read one verse, one verse, the first canto, first chapter, first verse is enough for our life. Mm. Prabhupada had put so much. So whole canto of Srimad Bhagavatam was traded. In those days, there is no PC to type and save everything. So whatever he had written was in the paper, on the papers. So Prabhupada took that opportunity and left. And he was also thinking that maybe, you know, uh, Krishna wanted me to write even better purports. You know, that's why it's Krishna's arrangement. Mm. Um, so later on, um, we know that he had gone through several, I'm only picking here and there. Um, so Shil Prabhupada, he, he, you know, his business uh, completely gone. Um, so he, he was like financially became so, you know, uh, so weak. Mm. So Krishna put through him, like, you know, he was running that uh, Prayag pharmacy and he, he basically lost everything. So when he lost everything, then how did Prabhupada thought? You know, there is a famous verse in the 11th canto that whenever Krishna wants to show his, his mercy upon someone, what does he do? Arishyeta dhanam shanai. Arishyeta dhanam shanai. I will take away the assets they, that person has. This is what? <laughs> You know, people go to temples to beg Krishna, give me that, Krishna, give me this. But here Krishna is telling that if I want to show mercy upon a being, first I will do Tadhanam Shanai, Arishe Tadhanam Shanai. I will take away their belongings, their possession, their assets. So this is what he thought, Prabhupada. Okay, everything gone. That means this is Krishna's mercy. And... Uh, of course, later on he moved to Vrindavan and he didn't want to take sannyas, but uh, you know, uh, his, his Guru Maharaj um, appeared in his dream three times and uh, asked him um, to take sannyas, uh, renounced order. Um, and following that uh, uh, guidance from his spiritual master through his dream, uh, he took sannyas. Um, so the next day, um, so... <laughs> When he was in Vrindavan, um, so he was walking just after the day of initiation. He was walking on the road. Um, so he was a sannyasi, and um, uh, a bull uh, just rushed towards him. Uh, and with his arms, he just you know, pushed in his uh, tummy, and he fell down uh, on the road. 
uh, next to this gutter and the drainage. Uh, so just to imagine like, you know, you took sannyas, the renounced order of life for, <laughs> you know, to, to please Krishna, to dedicate entire his life to Krishna. And next day, <laughs> just after day of uh, sannyas initiation, Krishna gave this, imagine. Uh, how would you feel, you know, Krishna? <laughs> what is this? I took sannyas for your sake and you give this to me. What kind of person you are? But Prabhupada took it as Krishna's mercy uh, and he carried on. Of course, uh, he had, uh, you know, those two heart attacks and heart attacks and, uh, on the ship. Uh, and when he had been to America, he had experienced so many issues. Um, and we know the issue of Bombay Temple. Uh, we know the issue of Rundavan Temple. Uh, even Mayapur, um, land purchasing, all these things, he was going through so many things. Uh, and yet his regular program was not disturbed. This is the point here. The point here is that his regular program was not disturbed. Mm. He was still commenting, like, you know, when we do one service uh, in the temple, we can't do the other services. But he was a, you know, he was an exalted personality. We can't compare definitely, but you know, we will definitely learn like, you know, sometimes people question, why me? Why not my neighbor? Why me, Krishna? But uh, Prabhupada like, you know, he sees life. This regular program was not disturbed at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, about Prabhupada and uh, we have another 12 minutes or so, then I will talk a little bit about from other devotees. Uh, uh, we, we all know the story of Parikshit Maharaj, uh, a great king, um, uh, grandson of uh, um, Arjun, son of Abhimanya Uttara. Mm -hmm. He was personally protected by uh, Sri Krishna when he was in the womb. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when he had received, when Maharaj Parikshit had received the news that he would die with a snake bite within seven days. And what was his reaction? His reaction, the Bhagavatam verse says, Sadhu Mane. Mane means thinking. Sadhu means good. So he thought it's good. So he thought, the same, same thing, just like Indra Dhimna Maharaj, whatever he had thought, and the same thing was mentioned there. Same points were mentioned that, you know, it's Krishna's arrangement. Let me ac accept that. You know, Krishna had a plan for me. So he welcomed it as a good news and then, and then used that opportunity to hear Srimad Bhagavatam sitting seven days and seven night and nights. As a result of that, now we got that nectar because of Parikshit Maharaj um, was desire. So, you know, it was, it was his intense desire that Shukadeva Goswami came and narrated entire uh, um, Bhagavatam and we are able to get that nectar. And um, there is a story of Chitra Ketu in the sixth canto. Chitraketu was a great king. Um, he had many wives, of course, and uh, though he had many wives, he had uh, no children, but by the blessings of uh, Narada and Angira, um, so he had one child. Uh, so because um, the other wives, co-wives, um, you know, did not have any children, they poisoned this child and uh, killed the ch child. And King lamented like anything, you know, just imagine like, you know, um, no children, but uh, having children after a long time. Anyway, from there, Chitraketu, by the blessings of Narad and Angirad, um, he got direct audience of Sankarshan, Lord Balramji. Mm. He saw Lord Sankarshan face to face. Then he was given an aeroplane in, there is a planet called Vidyadhara Loka. There is a celestial planet. He was just moving around with, you know, just sitting in that planet and enjoying nicely. 
And while he was moving in the planet, he saw Lord Shiva uh, lecturing. He was preaching. He was giving a discourse to great sages. While he was giving discourse, um, his wife, Mother Parvati, sat on his lap. So Chitraketu, uh, seeing this scene, that he kind of, uh, you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, said, what kind of example is this? See Lord Shiva, you know, he's the greatest personality while giving lecture discourse, you know, he's uh, making his wife sit on his lap. What kind of example is this? What is it? See, like that he mentioned. And Shiva, he didn't get disturbed. Hmm? Shiva and Chitraketu, they are god brothers, by the way. Uh, Chitraketu's, um, uh, Chitraketu worshipped Sankarshan, and Lord Shiva's deity is also Sankarshan. He meditates on Lord Sankarshan. So seeing this, Mother Parvati, she cursed Chitraketu, saying that, how dare you to say, you to say this to my, my Lord? Are you greater than Lord Shiva? Then I'll curse you to become a demon. Now, like lose your body now, and then you will take birth in a demon family. Hmm. And uh, Chitraketu, he saw Sankarshan, Lord, Lord Sankarshan, Balram, face to face. And, you know, Mother Parvati cursed him like this. And Chitraketu got down from the aeroplane. And he said, Yafal, pardon me, mother, pardon me. Hmm? What I had said may not be wrong. It, it, it is not wrong what I had said. Uh, you had awarded a big punishment. I'm not going to beg you to uh, relieve me from this curse. I will accept this curse. Hmm? You know, this is this is the material world. This is you know, Krishna. Krishna also says in the famous verse that uh, there are miseries. Don't think that uh, there won't be any miseries. The nature of this world, material world, is miseries. The kalaema shashvatam, famous verse we repeatedly quote. There are miseries always. So he just accepted that, and nothing like you know. He just said sorry for what I had done, and uh, so he left. And Lord Shiva glorifies this King Chitraketu. O Parvati, O my dear wife, see the behavior of a Vaishnava. Hmm? Although you cursed him to take birth in the demonic species of life, he was not disturbed at all. He just accepted it. Hmm? So Lord Shiva addresses Mother Parvati as Varanana, oh beautiful wife, oh beautiful lady. And then he, later he says that uh, Chitraketu is more beautiful than you <laughs> because he just sees character, sees character. Hmm? That's another example from Chitraketu's story. And uh, there is one more story. I'll just uh, quickly summarize that um, this, this story is narrated by um, um, Krishna to Uddha. Uh, this comes in the 11th canto. Mm. So there is a town called uh, Avanti. And in that Avanti, there was a Brahmin. Mm. His name was Avanti Brahman. Uh, he was a very wealthy person. And uh, so he had accumulated so much wealth but he was miserly, he was greedy. He was unable to fulfill his bare necessities. He doesn't, he was not able to, he was not spending enough money, eh? even a little money which will need for his bare necessities. And what to speak of giving it to his family and others. So they were, um, you know, disgusted of him because he was so greedy. Uh, he was a Brahmin, as I mentioned, and in due course of time, um, all his wealth gone. 
plunderers took away something, relatives took away something, and his family members uh, neglected him because of his behavior. Mm -hmm. So no place at home. So there, then at that time, um, uh, you know, uh, renunciation, a feeling of renunciation uh, appeared in his heart. Uh, so what is the use of this money? You know, I worked so hard um, day and night, so much working, hard labor, and, you know, I didn't enjoy even a little bit. Now everything is gone and my own relatives are neglecting me. I don't have any place to live here. So with that, he took, um, with that uh, thought, he just went and took uh, a renun um, order of renunciation, kind of sannyas. So what he used to do, he used to uh, go and beg, and he has, the, you know, he has uh, this sannyas rod, you know, a stick. Sannyas is old, he renounce people old the sticks. So he used to just go and beg door to door. And while he was begging, uh, people used to throw stones and, uh, you know, sometimes people used to kick him and uh, uh, some people had urinated in his part. Uh, so while he was begging, he was experiencing so many calamities, so many miseries. And, you know, he patiently tolerated all of them. Um, Krishna says that I like this Brahman very much and because he had tolerated us, all these insults and still carried on his mission. Let me read uh, one famous verse that he says here. And uh, in that uh, um, feeling of uh, you know, renunciation, he composed song. Um, so this is the song sung by uh, Avanti Brahman. Uh, this is called uh, um, Bhikshu Gita. And this is the first verse he says. Na dvijo, dvijo vacha, na yam jenome sukha dukkha hetur, na devatatma graha karma kalaha, mana param karana mamananti, samsara chakram parivarta yat yat. The Brahmana said, these people are not the cause of my happiness. And distress. Neither are the demigods. First, he said, we, we blame the people. You know, we are suffering. Our suffering is because of me, because of you. First, we blame people. He says that people are not cause of my distress. And sometimes we blame demigods. He says, neither the demigod, not my own body, nor the planets, not my past deeds, not this time. Rather, it is the mind alone that causes happiness and distress and perpetuates the rotation of material life. Mm -hmm. So this is what he said. Um, Krishna, you know, glorifies this Avanti Brahman so much. Sorry, I did not put that on the screen. I forgot. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so there are so many other examples, um, but I'll just quickly sum up some of the important points. Then we'll, we'll take any comments or questions shortly. So let me share the screen. I'll just sum up quickly two minutes. Put some notes, essential points. So the tools. Uh, to deal with these difficulties. First one is uh, that try and avoid attracting problems, uh, difficulties. So what does it mean? That uh, unnecessary don't buy the problems. So when you are, uh, you know, living uh, in, a, in a place, then we should obey the physical rules, uh, whatever it may be. So don't try to avoid attract problems. Sorry, try, try and avoid attracting problems. First one. And second one, Krishna says that this world is full of miseries. Try and understand this, that you will not be freed from misery. And rather he says to Arjun that uh, the miseries and the happiness are like uh, winter and summer seasons. They rotate, neither the winter nor the uh, summer permanent. This too shall pass away. This too shall, this too shall pass. 
this will this will also go so that's why krishna says that knowing this temporary nature that you should tolerate so this is another point second tool is that uh, that no these miseries are these miseries are inevitable and uh, they will they will rotate between happiness and misery that's why we should try and learn to tolerate them krishna says that kamsitikshas for bharata and uh, as i mentioned you know you need some advice when we are in difficulties always try and speak to devotees who you trust very much you should open up a little bit and then take some guidance everybody requires this uh, because everybody will have problems in their life at some point and you know devotees we have seen examples that uh, you know they they think when they are in misery they think you know it may be due to my past karma rather than blaming someone they think you know krishna you know i should have got x amount but you are only giving very little token of that and they think it's a purificatory process say for example that uh, king uh, indra dumna um, had uh, you know been given this body of a uh, elephant but he tolerated that because he tolerated that what was awaiting for him at the end liberation he achieved um, you know personally uh, krishna took the elephant king with him riding on garuda to vaikuntha just imagine krishna coming and personally taking uh, you with him so after the misery you no know, there is something greater if we if we go through if we tolerate that misery there is a greater thing hmm? that awaits for us uh, what else i got see lord's lord's hand and just try to see what is krishna trying to learn hmm? uh, how can i become stronger um, so that is another point depend on krishna and also sometimes if you you know there is another point just remember that if i you know face this challenge nicely if i tolerate this misery how does krishna feel hmm? so we have just seen the example of avanti brahman because he had tolerated those insults and so's difficulties and krishna was praising him very much hmm? so when we tolerate these these difficulties these challenges krishna really likes us that's another point that we have to see and as i mentioned that you know have a regular program of devotion or to be part of sangha group have a regular program and then it becomes a little easy for us to cope with these things so there are other points but i wanted to just stop here and i really want to thank everyone for being part of it and if anybody wants to share anything um any comments any realizations um please uh, do so you can unmute and speak because this is zoom it's easy for you to, you to do that uh, you can raise your hand any comments any questions please do so thank you hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna who is that uh shikha hare krishna mata ji how are you thank you i'm good i would like to ask you a question mm -hmm. that uh, you know Uh, we learned that we should tolerate in uh, unfavorable circumstances or situations but if in this today's world if if the situation is that somebody is doing unjust so at that time what should be our uh, reaction should we tolerate or should we raise our voice yes um, so it's it's a good question i thought somebody would ask and um, so if someone does unjust to us how, how do we react um so the thing is obviously um we should address the situation um there is there is a way of addressing definitely uh, you can't uh, you know burn out yourself we should address but while addressing we must try and tolerate especially for the devotees but uh, you know sometimes if you know if if people are taking advantage of your goodness then you need to teach them a lesson even for that also we need to be a strong in devotion devotionally we need to be strong yes to your question definitely we should try and address in a nice way thank you 
Okay. Uh, any no other question? No comments. Looks like everyone is uh, fully happy. Uh, just one or two announcements. Um, so beginning from tomorrow, uh, we are having a special seminar on Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, so three Saturdays. Um, uh, beginning from tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday, and um, that is 13th, uh, 20th, and 27th, um, three Saturdays. There is a seminar on Srimad Bhagavatam by uh, Kalachakra Krishna Prabhu, who is um, uh, very expert in Srimad Bhagavatam. He had plenty of experience. He was personally trained by his spiritual master to read this Srimad Bhagavatam. And um, so this will be in the morning. Um, so hearing Bhagavatam in the morning is uh, is very beneficial for all of us. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit tricky to get up and get ready and attend the Bhagavatam, but you would you would feel the difference, believe me or not. You, you would you know you would see the dif difference yourself. So I humbly request devotees to kindly take uh, advantage of this opportunity to be able to hear from him. Um, so that's three Saturdays from tomorrow at eight o'clock uh, in the morning. Uh, on Sunday, uh, we have a guest speaker again uh, from London. Um, is Ed Pujari of London Soho Temple. Again, a wonderful devotee, very nice, very humble. Um, so he, he, he looks after the deities, deity worship um, at Soho. Uh, he has kindly agreed uh, to give a talk on uh, deity worship at home. Um, so what are the basic principles and um, it, what is the importance of having deities? What is the minimum setup that required? Because several times devotees have several questions um, on this uh, home deity worship. So I request all of you to kindly take advantage of, uh, of these two programs. Hare Krishna, and thank you so much for uh, your time today. Hare Krishna, Hare Gaur. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Prabhu. everyone. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Thank you very much. Nice class. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu.